is Kamala Harris? That's a question. Well, first, you know, a beginning is a very delicate time, of course. And if we're going to be talking about somebody like Kamala, if we're going to be talking about somebody like Kamala the cop, you know, we, we, ha we have to look at what she represents. And Kamala, as a politician, is being hyped up for something that she's not. And what better way to hype things up than by having a sucker Democrat introduce us to her? So, folks, if you're sitting down, stand up and give up for Chucky Boy Schumer, who does the most god awful thing. This is only 15 seconds. He will clap so you don't have to. So, now that the process is played out from the grassroots bottom up, we are here today to throw our support behind Vice President Kamala Harris. I'm clapping. You don't have to. <laughs> Please. Hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Which one was more pathetic? Jeb Bush's, please clap. Or Chucky Boy Schumer, I'm clapping so you don't have to. Type one for Jeb. Type two for Chucky Boy. Have fun, folks. This should be a lively democracy. <laughs> so who is Kamala? Who is she? Let's talk about it. Ah, and the computer decides to think. Hang on, folks. Hang on. My goodness gracious, Cretaceous. Let's go and get started who Kamala Harris is. By beating an incumbent named Terrence Hallinan. Now, Terrence Hallinan was a thorn in the side of the very powerful mayor at the time, Willie Brown. Willie Brown, of course, had had a romantic affair with Kamala Harris. Kamala was in her late 20s. Willie Brown was 60 years old, actually older than her father. And there was a slight problem that Willie Brown was also still married. But none of that got into the way. Hey, anything to get on top. We're not interested so much in the salacious part of their personal relationship as the fact that this created a political alliance for Kamala Harris that would change California politics. Kamala Harris was relatively unknown. She was an attorney. But with Willie Brown's help, she would climb the rungs of power in San Francisco and California, which led her to the point where she is today the Democratic nominee for the vice presidency of the United States. But what's important in this election is that Willie Brown helped Kamala Harris beat Terrence Hallinan as a prosecutor. Well, why are we interested in this? We're interested in this simply because when Kamala Harris beat Terrence Hallinan, she dropped a number of very important corruption cases that her predecessor was prosecuting. And those corruption cases just happened to involve Willie Brown's friends who benefited from the decision she made, the people that were putting money into her campaign, the people that donated to her campaign, and the people that helped to get her elected. So Kamala Harris wins in 2003 and early 2004 in this election. Her predecessor had taken a pretty aggressive position against sexual abuse of children. And that's an important position to take. I think we'd all agree to that. During his tenure, what he had done was a couple of things. First of all, he had told the archdiocese to turn over records relating to complaints against priests going back 50 years. So... I'm pausing here. I want to keep these, this pausing to minimum because this video is very fascinating. It goes in deep, no pun intended, about her own policy decisions and what she did when she was given power. It's all one big game. It's all one six club, and you don't want to be part of it. And the thing is, look, what happened, especially when it came time to dealing with the archdiocese, what did... uh? Kamala do a whole lot of nothing at a minimum he wanted to release records that concerned this types of abuse but he was also looking for opportunities to actually prosecute the perpetrators well along comes Kamala Harris to take his place what does she do those documents were put under seal by Kamala Harris never to be released to the public at all it was a stunning reversal for somebody like Kamala Harris, who claimed that she felt that transparency and accountability in these kinds of sexual crimes was important. The second thing that Kamala Harris did was equally stunning. And that is during her eight year tenure as the San Francisco district attorney, she did not prosecute one single case 
of priest child abuse. Her um, participation in going after clergy or, or predators of the Catholic Church or bishops who had enabled these people was less than zero. I would like her to produce one clergy abuser or one bishop that she's even tried to prosecute. Now, what kind of an outlier is that? If you look at 50 of the largest cities in the United States, you find that all 50 of them prosecuted at least one case during this time period. The lone exception was Kamala Harris's San Francisco. No one shared that with the vote blue. No matter who, people. Come on, vote blue. Is this your fighter too? Oh, well, yeah, well, you, you, you guys and gals in, in that group know how to pick them. And speaking of picking them, the corporate media now is working double time, double time now to make sure, to make sure <clears throat> that Kamala Harris was never the border czar. Remember that when she told the people at the border, do not come, do not come. This is the kind of thing that is playing out all over conservative media. I just want to do a little bit of uh, record correcting. Uh, there's no, there, there's not record crime right now. Number one, Harris was um, put in charge, as you said earlier, of combating the roots of immigration. She was not and is not the border czar. And the Biden administration did task a vice president, Kamala Harris, with the issue of migrant crossings, naming her the so-called border czar. I've asked her, uh, the VP, today because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with uh, Mexico and the Northern Triangle and the countries uh, that uh, help, uh, are going to need help in stemming the movement of uh, so many folks uh, stemming the migration to our southern border. So in other words, she was a border czar, CNN, MSNBC. Why are you lying? I mean, come on, CNN and MSNBC and corporate media. You're supposed to be the news. And at least from what I've learned from Tom Wasbands from uh, Succession, what's interesting about the news? Number one, it's new. <laughs> but also you're supposed to inform people, you jackasses. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I okay, yeah. You haven't been to the border. And she brings up, I haven't been to Europe. Say that again. Border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. My God in heaven. So let's go ahead and go right back in deep. No pun intended. To who Kamala is. When you look at the intersection of money and power as it relates to Kamala Harris, you find something very troubling. It's not the traditional story of a legislator who's trying to modify legislation to benefit their donors or benefit their friends or benefit their family. You're talking about a prosecutor who's determining who's going to jail and who's not for crimes that they may or may not have committed. And this is where it gets very troubling for Kamala Harris. As the district attorney of San Francisco, you find that Kamala Harris went very soft on Willie Brown's friends and her political supporters and threw the book at people that had no political connection to her. The same thing happened when she became California Attorney General. Let me just give you two examples of what happened there. In one particular case, there was a company called Herbalife. There were seven to 800 complaints against this firm filed with Kamala Harris's office. That's fact number one. Fact number two, her San Diego office looked at these and felt that they were very troubling and deserved further investigation. They actually wrote a memo to Kamala Harris saying, we need to investigate this and we may even need to consider prosecuting this. Fact number three, Kamala Harris not only didn't prosecute Herbalife, she didn't actually allow them to even be investigated. Boy, oh boy, talk about having a key, keen-eyed eagle atop the gate. Don't you feel safe already? But Kamala is going to be great. Fact number four, and this is perhaps the most important one, Kamala Harris's husband's law firm, one of their biggest clients, was Herbalife. <laughs> ah! George Carlin, you're not rolling in your grave. 
He's not rolling in his grave. He's not vomiting in his grave. No, he's up there in the sky doing a great Broadway musical. It's called I Told You So. It's one big club, and you ain't in it. He's he's doing that, uh, man. You know what? I, I and here's the thing. I I know I got some creative people in my audience. If we got anybody involved in AI art, do like a George Carlin kind of art of doing a Broadway musical, like you know, saying I told you so. Because he is. He's absolutely right. And the thing is, there's another thing about Kamala. You know, she was held evidence for an innocent man on death row. Death row. It's not life row. Death row. Which means, uh-oh, he could. <laughs> but also something else here, too. And this will be very interesting to see how this campaign plays out. Harris's team suffers from huge staff churn. So, again, just remember. I talked about this on yesterday's show. Now, apparently, now, uh, when I said on yesterday's show there were five, now only four of the U.S. vice president's 47 original hires are still on the job. So, Jesus Christ, Kamala, that means 43 people, 43 people walked away from you. Now, it's either one, she has a high standard and it's fast paced, or two, she's insufferable. Insufferable. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has a staggering staff turnover of, of 91.5%. Jesus. Transparency Watchdog opened the book's report on Monday, citing disclosures from the Senate. The revelation came days after President Joe Biden ended his re-election campaign and endorsed Kamala Harris as his replacement. Open Burks and, uh, op uh, opened the books. Why did I say that wrong? An NGO that monitors government spending has analyzed the list of titles and names of the staffers at the Office of Vice President, which it took from the uh, semi-annual report of the Secretary of the Senate. As of March 31st, 2024, only four of the initial 47 staffers from the first year are still employed consistently and without interruption by the Vice President. All of this opens up for a treasure trove of attack ads. The Demo Democrats, Democrats, I, I, I think you're not ready. You have a 50-50 shot, and that's it. So good luck to you. I, I will be feasting on your panic on election night. Kamala was in on it. She covered up Joe's obvious mental decline. Our president is in good shape, in good health, tireless, vibrant, and I have no doubt about the strength of the work that we have done. But Kamala knew Joe couldn't do the job, so she did it. Look what she got done. A border invasion, runaway inflation, the American dream, dead. They created this mess. They know Kamala owns this failed record make america great again inc is responsible for the content of this advertising there's a treasure trove of political ammunition that the trump campaign can use against uh, kamala harris and look i just want to be very clear here i'm not a trump supporter i'm not a democrat supporter i don't believe in a two-party system i am a double hater through and through but i want to be clear on this democrats you ha you 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 have run a horrible election cycle this year and I have no idea how you're going to pull this out with Kamala. I am not going to entertain the mathematics that liberals are going to be throwing at me. You have a 50-50 shot. I don't want to hear about how great Kamala is because guess what? She's got scandals too. And they're all out there for anybody that's got the time of day to look into it. And I don't want to hear about a threat to democracy. I'm tired of it. All right? We don't have a democracy. We have a constitutional republic. But, oh, wait, we're really we're an oligarchy, okay? So all this big fear of she's the one that's going to save us, Kamala. Remember when fat Tony Jank Uger said save us, Kamala? Remember that? And she didn't do shite? She's not going to save you. But I understand many of you liberals have Trump derangement syndrome. It's okay. You're scared. You've been frightened your whole lives. You can't think for yourselves. And so by being the immature children that you are, you have to project your insecurities onto others. You have to bully people and harass them and think that you know better, but your smugness will be the end of you. No matter what happens, there's a 50-50 shot. Either Trump sits in the office or Kamala does. But right now you're in the honeymoon phase. No one's really looking too much into Kamala. I don't know how this will play out, but liberals... Should you lose, okay? Because it's 50-50. Who knows? Should you lose? Don't melt down. Don't cry and don't take it out on people like me or my audience. Because in all truth, we love you. 
but you are not serious people. And neither is Kamala.